There exists a poem that you must not read out loud. That poem is called Tomino's Hell. This poem is the work of Saijo Yaso, a popular poet who worked on children's nursery rhymes and popular song lyrics. The poem is recorded in the poetry collection Sakin. If you read it out loud, you will meet with misfortune. In reality, people have claimed to feel ill whilst reading this poem, so I recommend those who are weak to self-suggestion to read the poem silently. I will leave it up to you how you perceive the poem itself. Welcome to Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and on this show we'll be looking at different urban legends from Japan, how they came about, and, when possible, the truth behind them. As you may know by now, Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends volume 1, is now available on Amazon. Thanks to everyone's support, we were able to secure the number one new release slot in various categories, so thank you. If you haven't picked up your copy yet, you can grab it over on Amazon right now. Just type in Toshiden. The book helps support both this show and Kowabana, so please check it out. So, on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about one of my favourite urban legends, that of Tomino's Hell. This one is fairly popular not just in Japan, but overseas as well, so there's a good chance you may have heard of it somewhere. The legend states that if you read this poem out loud, you will die or meet with misfortune. Can a poem really hold such power? Let's have a look. First, I'm going to read it out in English. It goes as follows. Tomino's Hell. His older sister vomits blood, and his younger sister vomits fire, and the cute Tomino vomits his soul. Tomino falls into hell alone, the darkness of hell, where even flowers don't bloom. Is it Tomino's older sister wielding the whip? The blood on the whip weighs on his mind, beating and striking, yet not hitting at all. There is but a single road to the eighth and most painful hell. Would you request guidance into the darkness of hell, from the golden sheep or the nightingale? Put as much as you can into the leather sack in preparation for the journey into the most painful of hells. Spring comes to the forest and the valley, and to the seven twisting valleys of dark hell. The nightingale in the cage, the sheep in the cart, and tears in the eyes of cute Tomino. Cry, Nightingale, in the forest rains. He screams as loud as he can in yearning for his younger sister. The cries echo throughout hell, and the buttercup blooms. Through the seven mountains and seven valleys of hell, the cute Tomino's solo journey. If they are in hell, bring them the mountain of pins and needles. The red pins don't stand out as a sign leading to cute Tomino. This poem, known as Tomino no Jigoku in Japanese, was written by poet Saijo Yaso in the 1919 poetry collection Sakin. He was 26 at the time. 
On the surface, the poem is about a person named Tomino and their journey through hell. It's said that if you read the poem out loud, then you will either die or suffer from a great catastrophe. Of course, this goes for the original Japanese version, which I'm not going to read out here, but you can find the romanization for it on koabana.net. But why do people claim that reading this poem out loud will curse the narrator? These rumors supposedly started in 1983, when a director by the name of Terayama Shuji made a film based on the poem, and later died. There were also rumors at the same time of a university student who read the poem out loud and then died in mysterious circumstances after. But what is the real truth? And just who is Tomino? And why is he or she in hell? First of all, let's take a look at what the poem means. Even for Japanese speakers, the true meaning behind Tomino's hell can be difficult to understand. There are countless blog entries and forum posts where you can find people asking others what the poem means and if any of them have been brave enough to read it out loud. There are several interpretations, and it's up to the reader to decide for themselves what the poem means to them. The version I read earlier is my own translation, and there appears to be a lot of misleading information about this particular legend in English. So let's take a closer look at what's going on. At face level, this is a poem about Tomino traveling through hell. Who is Tomino? The gender is never mentioned in Japanese, nor is Tomino a common name particular to boys or girls. It can be deduced from the poem that Tomino is a male, however, as expressed by his love for his younger sister. There's more, but I'll get to that in a moment. The poem begins by letting the reader know that Tomino has thrown up his tama. This is the first important point. The kanji used in the poem are the characters for treasure. The reading given for these kanji, however, is tama, expressing balls or beads. This is on purpose, as it's meant to draw a parallel to tamashi, one's spirit. Tomino has thrown up his spirit. He has lost his soul, and thus he begins his descent into hell. Yet Tomino is not traveling through hell. Not literally, anyway. It is largely believed that the poem is a metaphor for war. His older sister spits up blood. She is passionately encouraging him to fight for their country and win the war. His younger sister spits up fire. She is encouraging him in her own innocent way as he sets out. Then Tomino spits up his tama. He is presenting his life for the cause. The poem repeatedly refers to Tomino as cute, letting the reader know that this is only a young man still innocent himself when he sets out. Much of the imagery presented throughout the rest of the poem draws allusions to the battlefield and the horrors present within. He sees the buttercups, those flowers that often grow between the rice fields back home. The poem mentions him hitting and beating and yet not striking at all reminding us of the fruitlessness of it all. He cries for his younger sister, and as he travels through the seven valleys of hell to reach the last, the eighth and most painful, he suffers more and more. Something that gets lost in translation is the last few lines. The red pins signify the Sen Nin Buddy that soldiers used to wear into war. This was a piece of white cloth, usually a meter long, that was sewn 
with a thousand red stitches from a thousand different women. Different patterns and slogans could be sewn in, and the soldiers wore them as good luck and a sign of devotion to the women they left behind. They were supposed to give the wearer courage, good luck, and immunity from injury. These were generally made by the soldier's family, their mothers, sisters, girlfriends, or wives. These women would traditionally stand near temples, stations, or other busy areas of town and ask passing women to sew a single stitch. Although in later periods, such as World War II, these were made en masse by thousands of women at once and then posted to the soldiers already at war. So, this Sen-Nin buddy is not just a sign of good luck. It's also supposed to be an identifying mark, a mejirushi, which is mentioned in the poem. Should Tomino die on the battlefield, they can identify him by his Sen-Nin buddy and return him to his family. The final lines mention that his Sen-Nin buddy does not stand out, however, and it's left to the reader to imagine why. If Tomino is unable to be identified, that means that, first of all, he has likely died in battle, and secondly, that he won't be returned to his family. Suddenly, the poem takes on an entirely different meaning, one even scarier than the literal reading of traversing through hell. When put into the context of the poetry collection Tomino's Hell was originally published in, this interpretation makes a lot of sense. There is another common interpretation you can find on the internet, however. This one more literal, that claims that Tomino was in love with his younger sister, and it was this forbidden love that doomed him to hell. This interpretation comes from the single line in which Tomino yearns for his younger sister. So, to me personally, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's not impossible to see how this version came about. In 1974, a movie called To Die in the Countryside was released. It was written and directed by Terayama Shuji, and he took a lot of inspiration from Tomino's Hell when making the film. When he later died, people claimed that it was because of that poem. There were also rumours of a female university student who died after reading it. Yet, in reality, Tomino's Hell did not become the urban legend it is today until 2004. Writer Yomota Inuhiku claimed in one of his books that if you by chance happen to read this poem out loud, after you will suffer from a terrible fate which cannot be escaped. Even though people have been reading Tommy Knows Hell out loud since 1919, it wasn't until 2004 that one person claimed that it was cursed. While Yomota only claimed that one would suffer a terrible fate, rumours of Terayama and the university student were also floating around at the same time, so it didn't take long for the legend to mutate and turn into read this poem out loud and you will die. Never mind that Terayama actually died nine years after his film was made and no one knew who this female university student was. The poem's creator, Saijo Yaso, lived to the ripe old age of 78 himself, 51 years after creating and presumably reading the poem out loud countless times during his life. These days, you can find countless videos on YouTube and other Japanese video platforms of people reading Tomino's Hell out loud. Many claim to feel ill while reading it, and others claim that they later met with misfortune off camera. Undoubtedly, some of these people did feel ill, 
Self-suggestion is a powerful thing. Yet there is no confirmed case of someone dying simply because they read the poem out loud. But who knows? If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find the lyrics to the poem over on koabana.net. Try it out and let me know how you go. If you can. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. Don't forget, you can pick up Toshiden, Exploring Japanese Urban Legends Volume 1 over at Amazon right now. Or you can support us through Patreon and get early access and bonus episodes to both this show and Koabana right now. Head over to koabana.net to find out more. And I'll see you again next time for even more Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koabana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koabana.net now.